Hello guys, my name is Diego Pacheco and this is another video in Rust. Today we're gonna be covering threads, so let's get started. So I'll open in my idea right now and as usual, I do not have dependencies. This is just the standard library. So if you take a look in my cargo.toml, uh, you can see there's no dependencies, just standard Rust. And then we can jump to my code. So I have a bunch of things uh, with threads here I want to show you guys. So let's go to the main code right now. So I have one, two, three, four, five functions doing different things with threads. Let's start with my dummy thread. So my dummy threads, in order to create a thread in Rust, you're going to do std thread spawn. And then you're going to, like here, I'm doing an inner closure, uh, creating an inner function right away here. If you want, I have, a, I have two videos about closures that you can take a look. So we create this anonymous function here. And my code just saying the thread is running. So if you don't want to type all this, one thing you can do is you can say use spawn and then uh, you can go here and now I can just type like this and just say spawn, right? So that's a different way uh, to do it because we are importing. Okay, so here I'm just creating another thread, but then uh, if I don't do anything, so if there's no Discord here, this function could finish and we might see the two threads, maybe, maybe not, right? So if you really want to have these two threads uh, running, you need to wait. And one way to do this uh, is to do a for underscore, meaning nothing, and I'm going to 10,000, and this is going to be enough wait time for these threads to run. That's very dumb. Uh, there are better ways to do it. So uh, let's do some waiting here. So here I'm doing a for, uh, for i and 0 to 10. Then we're going to do thread.spawn, and thread that's fun we're gonna uh, return a join handle to us, right? So we're gonna do let handler so have the instance of the join handle. And in my thread here, you can see I'm doing move. And the reason I'm doing move is because I need to move the ownership of i to this uh, inner closure here. So the the code is just printing uh, i uh, to i again and to times i. So we're doing a time table of two, as you guys can uh, realize. And then in order to wait, I do handle dot join. But this code is also uh, a bit bad because it will create a thread and we wait. It will create a thread and we wait. It will create a thread and we wait. So uh, it's not like running all the threads in parallel. So to do better, let's see. Oh, before that, let's see how can we get a result back from a thread in a sync way. So I'm spawning a thread here and just returning 42, for instance. This is the last um, line, there's no dot, so Rust understand that this is the return. So I have a join hand of i32, which is my computation. And then I can do computation.join, which will sync wait, unwrap, uh, because this, uh, um, joined uh, is a result, as you can see, and either can be uh, okay or error. So getting the result here, printing the result and returning the result. So this is how we can get a value from a thread. Now, how can we properly run things in async? So uh, I have a for, and that's very similar to the other code, but the difference now, I, I have a vec multiple vec of handlers and then I push the handler to the vec. In this case we are creating the threads and then there's a second for where then we are waiting for all the threads to be done. In this code all the threads are going to run uh, asynchronously, going to be much better. Right? So often what you want to create threads, you want to have a vec with their handlers there. Uh, that's like a preferred thing to do. Then uh, let me see how we can do some thread slip here. So first I'm getting uh, import here. Uh, it's in the library as well from std time. I'm getting duration and system time. And uh, I do system time now. So I know when I'm started, 
I'm, I'm printing the time where I start, creating a thread, and then I using the sleep function on a thread, and then I pass duration from sex to. So I'm waiting for two seconds and then returning 42. Then I'm waiting uh, the computation to be done, uh, getting the time again, uh, and just do, doing some math here to do the difference between when I start and when we are done, and then we are printing the result and the difference. And now I can run this whole Rust application. And here what we can see. So we can see uh, the threads running, we can see the timetable going on. Um, we see here again, because we have one that's blocking and other that's more parallel. Uh, so on the first one, you, you can see the numbers there increment uh, in order, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, nine. And here we can see some different order, like one is here, zero is here, six is here, it's not really uh, in order. And here we can see when before we run the sleep, and here we can see the result, and we can see that we were sleeping for two seconds, right? So it worked as expected. So this is how we can work with threads in Rust. I hope you guys like it. See you next time. Take care. Cheers.